Are hold harmless agreements ethical? We're going to talk about that on this episode of Title Tuesdays. Hey everybody, welcome back to another fantastic episode of Title Tuesdays. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO here at Independence Title, also known as your Title King. Today we're talking about that famous hold harmless agreement. I talk about this agreement at a lot of the investor clubs and you need to be careful of them. You need to realize when you're signing a hold harmless agreement, why are you signing it? What are the contents of this agreement? So here I want to tell you at Independence Title, we use a hold harmless agreement for various reasons, but it's usually disclosed to the party as to why. When you're closing at some of these other title companies, I've seen general hold harmless agreements that basically state, if anything goes wrong, don't hold us harmless, deal with it yourself. They're passing blame to you and they're saying it's your responsibility to make sure everything was done properly. And I disagree with that. I've even seen title companies that have a, a hold harmless agreement for a lien search saying we've ordered a lien search as a courtesy to you buyer, but we're not giving you any coverage for it. That to me is unethical. That is bad business. If I've ordered a title search and I've ordered a lien search, you better bet I'm giving you the coverage that you paid for. So you need to watch the documents you're signing at closing. So many times people come in and they're just signing documents, signing documents. They don't ever read the documents and they don't understand what they're reading. Ask the closer to explain the documents to you. Ask them, what is this hold harmless for? So a hold harmless, to give you a brief overview, basically means that you are holding the title company and the underwriter harmless from any issues that arise from that issue. So what are some of the common hold harmlesses that we are going to have you sign? The first one on a cash deal a lot of times, or a conventional lender, if they do not require a, a termite inspection, we will have you have a, a sign a hold harmless talking about uh, termite inspection, that it was not done. So if there were termites in the house, we are not responsible. So that would be your job to get that done within your inspection period. The second thing we talk about are surveys. Surveys are a big one. Surveys are if you're buying a cash deal or you're getting a private loan, if you choose not to order a survey, which as you all know is the boundary lines of the property, that's what gives you the boundary line of your property. If you choose not to get a survey, it's okay, but you need to sign a hold harmless for it. That, so if any issues come up from survey matters, you would not have survey coverage. What could come up? Neighbors could be uh, encroaching onto your property a neighbor's fence, a neighbor's swimming pool, a sidewalk. There are many different things that can happen. Usually if it's a lot and a block, a square lot, you're usually okay, but sometimes these pie-shaped lots have a lot of weird things. And, and we know plenty of investors that choose not to order surveys, and we know plenty of investors that have had survey issues that they've had to deal with. So it's very, very important, I feel, to get a survey. And a lot of times if you're gonna buy it, fix it, and then sell it, you can then get that survey recertified over to your buyer and then you can save on the cost for it. What else do we have you sign a hold harmless for? Homeowner's insurance. If you're buying a property, I like to make sure you get homeowner's insurance. If you're not buying insurance for your property, property and casualty insurance, you would sign a hold harmless to make sure that if anything comes up that pertains to property and casualty insurance, you would not have coverage from the title company. So we just disclosed this to you that this is an additional coverage you can buy. You can order a termite inspection, you can order and, uh, and buy a property survey and you can uh, get a quote and purchase and bind your homeowner's insurance policy. Those are the common ones. What are some of the uncommon ones? Permit issues. A lot of times there are old permit issues, maybe expired permit issues that the title company decides to just throw under your nose. If you are signing something for a permitting issue or a governmental issue, you need to make sure you're aware of what the issue is because they will slide that paper under your nose and ask you to sign it and you would not have coverage for those issues. So it's very, very important to see what you're signing. Some of the bigger things that we see hold harmless is for, a lot of times a code enforcement violation. We just had one uh, for a roof issue, a code enforcement violation of $1.9 million. 
Now that investor knows they are going to buy that property cash from the homeowner and they are going to go to the city and do what's called a mitigation, a lien mitigation or a lien reduction hearing in order to get the city to take that $1.9 million that they know they'd never collect. It would be foreclosed on before they would be able to collect. They're going to reduce it down to administrative costs. The new homeowner or, or investor that's buying that property will take care of those issues but they do not have coverage from the title company. So they know when a hold harmless comes into play, you are buying it subject to those issues. Another big one that we see are sometimes uh, you're taking it subject to a mortgage. Maybe you're taking over the seller's mortgage on the house because they're in foreclosure. You say, I'll buy your house and take over your mortgage. That would then, you would sign a hold harmless and it would be an exception to your title policy. So those are a lot of the basic things when it comes to hold harmless. The reason for, for producing this video is to make sure you are aware what is a hold harmless agreement, when is it good, when is it bad, but read your closing documents. And if you have any questions, you can always give our office a call. But the moral of the story, do not, do not, say it with me, do not sign a blanket hold harmless agreement. You refuse to sign it and you tell them, unless you have something specific that I'm signing it for, I refuse to sign that hold harmless agreement. So thanks for watching Title Tuesdays. Give me a thumbs up if you learned something new about hold harmless agreements and when they should be used. Maybe share this on social media. Give me a comment below of a future video you'd love to see us produce. So thanks for watching Title Tuesdays. My name's Kevin Thatcher signing off and I look forward to seeing you at the closing table.